people that were either direct relatives of Jane Doe or they were possibly aunts or uncles. Detective Bean, uh, with the assistance of Detective Phelps, were able to utilize internet resources to finish building out the family tree. While doing so, uh, while doing this, detectives uh, were able to locate information on all but one of the family members, that individual, and it was discovered that she had actually run away in 1980 and was 14 years of age. DNA samples were obtained from biological family members and turned over to Orpham Labs to be compared to the DNA sample from Jane Doe with a match, with, with a match, finding a match. All of the evidence was then compiled and released to the Harris County Institute of Forensic Science where they confirmed the fact that we had an identity on Jane Doe as being Sherry Jarvis. I never like to refer to this case as being a cold case. It has always been a top priority of our department. We loved her as well. I would like to thank the Sheriff's uh, Office, the Criminal Investigative Division, as well as the lead detective uh, at this time being Tom Bean, for his drive and determination to not give up, as well as the partnerships that we have had assistance from, being the Texas Rangers, Federal Bureau of Investigations, Harris County Institute of Forensic Science, Orthrum Tech Labs, and the National Center of Missing and Exploited Children, and the past Sheriff's Office investigators that have spent many hours, many days, many months on never quitting and keeping this case alive. At this time, we'd like to uh, hear from uh, Orthrum Lab. You'd like to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, I'm David Middleman from uh, Othram, and, uh, and and we did the lab work to support uh, the investigation. So there are a whole bunch of cases, unfortunately, um, just like this one, of, of folks that are unidentified. They're not going to be found in a traditional um, government database. Um, this is a victim, so not someone that would have been tracked as a criminal or someone that had done something in the past. And what we do at Othram is we go back and re-examine uh, for contemporary and also for these older cases, any evidence that's available. This case was incredibly complex and there was a lot of work across multiple agencies to find evidence that was suitable for us to do the work we had to do. Um, and, and so that shouldn't be forgotten. There's so much investigative work that precedes us being able to even do anything uh, with evidence. But we were very fortunate in that we were able to secure some evidence that helped us steer to her identity. And what we do is we, um, we can take evidence that is very old DNA that's uh, been previously unsuitable or unusable uh, in other methods and traditional testing, um, you know, processes, and we can we can pull genetic information, uh, markers and such from this evidence, and, and use that as as you've heard from the sheriff to build out uh, long distance relationships. And in the case of someone like uh, uh, like Sherry, for which there was really no evidence at the scene and no good clues, and she was so far away from home, and no one here locally in Huntsville would have known who she was, uh, we were able to uh, establish the long distance genetic relationships to folks that ultimately then were able to help us identify who she was. And, and I just want to say as a parting point, um, this, is, this is technology that's very robust, and, and if you've followed any of the work we've done, there, there's a whole bunch of cases here in Texas and elsewhere that are being um, sorted out now. Uh, with, 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 with successful outcomes like this one. So I think this technology is very general. Um, you'll see it all the time. I always tell folks that it's an extraordinary uh, opportunity anytime we can help name somebody, but I hope in the next few years it goes from extraordinary to ordinary, and this is just a routine thing. Um, and, and I just want to double down on what the sheriff said. In this particular case, every case is different. In this particular case, there was a lot of, lot of complexities to getting the case off the ground, and um, it just was not possible without obviously Tom Bean and, and, the, and, the, and the Walker County Sheriff's Office, but also um, just tremendous behind the scenes support uh, from the Houston FBI office and, uh, and from the Rangers. And, and all of us have worked together on other Texas cases and so just could not be more grateful to be in a, such, a, such a, group, a good group of folks. Thank you, sir. Sir, could you spell your, your name and your company name, please? Yes, sir. My name is David Middleman, M-I-T-T-E-L-M-A-N. And I'm the CEO of Othram, which is O-T-H-R-A-M. 
this time we'd like to hear, hear from Agent White, uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Well, uh, just thank our partners um, in this Walker County Sheriff's Office, the uh, Texas DPS, Harris County uh, Office, DA's Office, as well as the Forensics Lab. Uh, this is an extraordinary case, as the sheriff said. And we, we're putting resources together and using technology to solve some of our older cases that we have. Um, this is going outside the norms of traditional law enforcement techniques. But here at the FBI, uh, across the country, uh, we're using this technique to try to help state and local officials solve some of the older cases that they have. Not just for the sheriff's office, but to bring closure to a family, um, to find the victim and to find the offenders who prey on our innocence, uh, just like in Sherry's case. Um, again, we will continue working with our partners, continue working with the private sector, as Orton mentioned, to bring some resolution to the family. Um, and as far as the Houston FBI is concerned, we're gonna be here every step of the way. Uh, we're committed to this, and Houston FBI has been named as a hub for the investigative genealogy technique that we used on this case. Um, with that, uh, I'll turn it back over to you, the Sheriff. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ranger Doolittle, would you like to say a word? I would just thank, uh, thank the Sheriff's Department, thank the FBI offer them, the DA's office, everybody working together collectively to try to find resolutions and answers for these unsolved investigations. So we thank everybody for that. Absolutely. Mr. Durham, District Attorney of Walker County. Yeah, Will Durham with the Walker County District Attorney's Office. Um, I was a child in 1980, just running around Huntsville. I remember when this happened. I'm just real pleased with all the work that's been done and the investigation and the technology that's advanced to the point where we're able to identify this young girl. And uh, from a uh, prosecutor's perspective, I just hope that this information will lead us to whoever did this. And if they are alive, uh, they'll be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Thank you. At this time, we'd like uh, Deputy Wells to read a statement from the family. Uh, then at, at the conclusion of this, we'll, we'll go into an answer question. Good morning, Deputy Wells, and last name is spelled W-E-L-L-S. I'll be sharing with you guys the official release from the family of Sherry Jarvis. We would like to extend our sincere appreciation to Detective Thomas Bean and all the cooperating agencies and people involved in identifying Sherry and Jarvis remains. We would also like to express our gratitude to Morris Memorials for donating Sherry's headstone and all the people who visited her burial site throughout the years. We lost Sherry more than 41 years ago and we've lived with the bewilderment every day since until now as she has finally been found. We contacted the Salvation Army and hired a private investigator in an attempt to locate her but to no avail. The dedication of the uh, aforementioned people led to our reunion with Sherry and provided a long-awaited of eight painful answers to our questions and on her whereabouts. Sherry Ann Jarvis was a daughter, a sister, a cousin, and a granddaughter. She loved, she loved children, animals, and horseback riding. She was a tender 13 years of age when she stated, when she stated, correction, when the state removed her from our home for habitual truancy. Sherry never returned to our home as promised in a letter we received from her shortly after her departure. She was deprived of so, of so many life experiences as a result of this tragedy. She was denied the opportunity to experience romance and love and marital bliss, the heartache and painful, the pain of loss, the pure joy of having children or growing old and being able to reflect on some milestones that afforded on a bounding lifetime. Our parents passed away never knowing what happened to her or having any form of closure, but we are grateful that they never had to endure the pain of knowing her death was so brutal. We take a measure of comfort in knowing that she was well, she has been identified and where she is located so we can pay our respect at her final res res resting place. We will continue to support those seeking her killers because she did not deserve the death she was she received and justice served to those who would commit such a continuous act would be a tribute to Sherry. We love and miss you Sherry very much. You are with you are with mom and dad now, Sherry. May you rest in peace. 
Detective Beam, would you like to say something? Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody involved, the FBI, Authorm Labs, the sheriff for allowing me to, to investigate this case, the Texas Rangers. This wouldn't have been able, it would have been, we wouldn't have been able to do this without everybody that's standing here. Um, we just, everybody that's here is, has been great. Um, the family's been great. Um, I'm happy that this is finally coming to a conclusion on this portion, and now we're going to get into finding out who did this to Sherry, and that's going to be one of one of the things that I'm looking forward to in finishing out my career. Again, as we've stated, we could not have put this together without the the members of this team. Uh, you can't get anywhere without it. Uh, I'm so appreciative. I'm a very appreciative of y'all being here today as well, and help uh, help get a, help us get this information out so that people do realize the fact that we are when a case gets when a case gets older, it's not just going away. It's forever, and we're going to continue to work on it as long as we can. Fortunately, we now have the victim identified. So appreciative of that. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, and we will continue. We will continue to do so. Thank you. All. Any questions? Yes, sir. Right well, you can spell Sherry Ann and then confirm it was Stillwater, Minnesota. You said Stillwater, Minnesota. Her name is spelled S H E R R I A N N J A R V I S. Perfect. Thank you. Question back. Yeah, you said you were currently are now trying to find the suspect. You did this. Do you have any leads on that? We are working on everything. This is still an ongoing investigation, and we will follow through with everything that we can in order to identify the person who's responsible for this. Did you ever find a tie to the LSU? You said you were looking for the LSU. At this time, we have found no ties. Uh, back in the day, they interviewed every employee. They inter interviewed every inmate that was there. Uh, actually, Crime Stoppers have put up a reward, and there has never been anything that's come forward with that. Family, family didn't know of anyone. No, sir. Yeah. Clay? Do you mind reminding us again in relation to where we are now, how far outside of town she was found on I-45, or just the general area where she was located? Uh, just north of the 118, about a mile and a half, uh, is about a mile south of the FM 1696 uh, exit. So just kind of north of Huntsville, but not, not way out. It's uh, Even in the 80s, it was still kind of close to, to town. Yes, sir. I guess uh, a lot of the times you hear the, the term no term stone would left unturned when talking about finding who this person was. Um, for the investigation right now, what are the steps taking place every day? Uh, there are multiple steps taking place. Um, I can't really go into those. Um, there's other investigations that are very similar to this that have happened within the state of Texas, so we're working with those agencies and trying to identify a suspect in those as well. Um, we're also backtracking and talking to family members and trying to find out exactly where Sherry was, and we're going to try to find any connection that we can in those locations as well. And that's part of this partnership that you see up here. We're all going to be pulling together and working together. Uh, again, there, there's things that we can't get into, but there is new information that has come developed after the identity of Sherry has been known. But we're going to rely on this partnership, and we all come together. It's a force multiplier. Yes, ma'am. Was she reported missing in Minnesota, and if so, when? She was reported missing in Minnesota. It would have been in the 1980s when she ran away. Um, she actually was not in family custody when she ran away. So it would have been the agency that actually had custody of her at the time that reported her. Unfortunately, we weren't able to find her because the records have been purged since then. Just, just anything more I'd like to say on having a little bit of closure on this. Obviously, still need to find her but uh, we can take it from the family as a deputy read, but just for you guys staying on this case for so many years now, from 1980 to now, just I'm, I'm sure you'll have a little bit of satisfaction that we know one more piece of the puzzle on this. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. The, the, getting the, to, the first thing you have to do in order to solve a crime is you have to know who your victim is um, in, in order to find out and, and try to create suspects and, and things of that, of that nature and to pursue your investigation you got to know what direction to go. So that's one of the first things that you do in any criminal investigation is you've got to try to identify your victim uh, in order to proceed. 
Yes, ma'am. You said new technology or te technique was used in this. How old is that technology or technique? I'm going to refer that. So, a, a lot of the work that, uh, so our, our company started in 2018. Um, the techniques we actually, the, the techniques we used in this case, um, uh, actually were the, some of them were developed in the course of uh, this actual case for about a year old. So, I think it's important to note that the technology is new. Five years ago, there would have been nowhere to do this kind of work. Um, but not only that it is new, but it is accelerating maybe every six months. And I think uh, you'll see a, a, a larger and larger number of cases that can be included uh, in the technique next year and the year after. It's, it's very exciting. It's also very new. And so it will take some time. It will not to be deployed to all cases. Yeah, we, we use a process that's called forensic grade genome sequencing. And it's a, a big fancy word that basically means that we can take forensic material material that ordinarily wouldn't be suitable for, for this kind of DNA testing, and, and we can basically um, prepare that DNA so that we can read information from it. So it's uh, being able to unlock information, investigative leads from crime scene evidence that just previously been locked away. And so um, that is a cause for optimism. There's probably, uh, as, as you heard, dozens of other cases, some related, some not, that may have evidence that has been intractable in the past. And with this rapid acceleration of technology, we can go back now and re-examine cases that have been deemed unsolvable or, or cold and see if now there's technology that can access an information. And it's a real testament to investigators, by the way, who probably did not anticipate uh, any folks up here stating what we're doing um, to run the work necessary, to, as they do with all cases, to preserve, document, and, and catalog all the evidence at a crime scene. So it's also exciting as well. Thank you, Mike. Any other questions? Again, there's no more questions. Thank you all very much for coming. Uh, there will be a copy of the statement uh, for the family up here on the table as well as the uh, photograph. And uh, I'll be around the room if you have anything. Again, thank you so much for everyone's time coming. Yeah, thank you, everyone.